this is David Bedin and Basim Eid. And we're, we're contacting you today from Jerusalem because of the very, very important conference you're having on the subject of UNRWA. Why is, it, why is UNRWA so important, Basim? Uh, I don't think that uh, UNRWA is important. UNRWA became less and less important okay. right now among the Palestinian refugees. As we can see in most of the camps, not only in the West Bank and Gaza, but even in the Aspen, there are a lot of demonstrations right now and a lot of youth movements against UNRWA. Why would people be against UNRWA? Because, listen, UNRWA almost kept the Palestinian refugees in the refugee camps for around over than 70 years, and nothing changed. So for how long UNRWA can continue keeping those Palestinian refugees as hostages inside the refugee camps. Do you as a human rights expert see, how do you see UNRWA in the context of human rights? I didn't see that uh, the human rights uh, issue is on the UNRWA agenda. While UNRWA right now is teaching for hatred, for violence, I didn't see that the human rights issue is one of the main topics of UNRWA, unfortunately. Is the policy of UNRWA to keep people in UNRWA camps uh, a, a violation of human rights? Of course, because if UNRWA wants to survive with its employees, that's exactly the policy that they should have to practice right now in the refugee camps. The po which, policy, the, which policy are you referring to? I am referring to the policy of the, of the education as an example. While UNRWA's slogan used to be that peace is start here in the schools, right. but unfortunately, I didn't see that UNRWA trying to educate in any of the refugee camps towards peace, towards coexistence, and towards reconciliation. It's exactly the opposite what they are doing right now. What do you think of the plan that Mordechai ben Porat came up with in 1983? See, which, which, was, which was vetoed by the United Nations to resettle the people, the, the people in the refugee camps, even where they are. I, in my the time to solve the issue of the refugees. And in my opinion, it is very easy to solve it if the international community, and especially Europe, are interested in solving the issue of the Palestinian refugees. You're saying to me that the donor countries have a very big role to play? Yeah, of course. I think that for the, for the donors' countries, a, 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 the whole Israeli conflict, a Palestinian conflict, unfortunately became a business issue rather than it is a political issue. Everybody is making money on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, while the Israelis and the Palestinians are only became the victims of a such kind of conflict. Okay, how are they making money? See, first of all, we we uh, we we heard about billions of dollars. So One point two billion dollars a year, which comes in right? a year. Mm -hmm. Now, if you will come to the refugees, uh, refugee camps right now, you didn't see any effective a uh, uh, help that UNRWA is really providing to the refugees. If we will take Shafat refugee camp right now, go inside the camp and see the garbage. It is tens of tons of garbage thrown all over the world in the Shafat refugee camp. Where is UNRWA? Where is the budget for, 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 uh, for UNRWA for such kind of camp? This is one of the major problems that UNRWA is just asking for more and more money while they are providing less and less services inside the refugee camps. What does UNRWA say when people say, I'd like to live elsewhere, I want to be live in a better home? What, what is the answer that UNRWA gives? No, UNRWA, the answer of UNRWA, you shouldn't have to do it unless you return back to your original house in Haifa and Yahoo. What happened to those original houses? I, uh, original houses? I don't think that these original houses are, are, already exist. I don't believe so. And, uh, you know, sometimes when I am seeing people demonstrating withholding is such big key for their houses, 
I used to say, listen, these keys are not are not in use any any anymore, and most of the houses these days, the doors are opened by remote control. So why you are holding such kind of key? Tell me something. Have you gotten any good feedback from the donor countries? No, unfortunately, right now I didn't see. I uh, I can say that probably after the cutting of the fund of the United States to UNRWA, UNRWA almost succeed to raise double or even triple amount of the amount that the United States already cut. Do you think the United States knew that? I think that the United States knew that. But the, the United States, it's not enough only to cut the fund. The United States should have to call to reform UNRWA. Right. Because the United States knows that the $300 million that they supposed to donate to UNRWA every year, they can raise it from, from Japan, from Canada, from uh, Germany, from France, from uh, the UK, from Saudi Arabia, from Kuwait. So this is not an effective policy. I think that the United States should have to do much more than to cut the fund from UNRWA. What do you suggest to the people and the government of Sweden? See, I think that the Swedish government should have a probably to create a delegation. And this delegation must have to go around all of the ref Palestinian refugee camps in West Bank, in the Gaza Strip and diaspora, and to ask the refugees directly what is the solution that they are seeking. In my opinion, the solution that these people, these refugees are seeking is how we can get a better life. I think that seven, over than 70% of those refugees are people who are seeking a better life rather than the right of return. Okay, I much appreciate that. That seems to me a very, uh, very logical way to go. And it doesn't seem to be an Israel issue at all. No, 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 no. Israel is not, is not the case here. Okay. The case here is the international community. Okay. While Israel and Ben Purat, as you mentioned, but a very good plan. Why the United Nations is not accepting this such kind of plan? That's exactly the plan that the majority of the Palestinian refugees are demanding these days. Right. Well, that plan called for uh, um, the basically the taking down of the refugee camps and creating a, a small communities next to the camps to, to re receive the people in a dignified way. So people can live under dignity in a such kind of neighborhoods rather than inside the camp. Right. I think that by living in a camp for 70 years, it's one of the most a huge a humiliation towards the Palestinian refugees. And why the international community keeping a blind eyes on a such severe humiliation against the Palestinian refugees? I hope that the people in, in the Sweden conference will try to pass this message more and more, and will try in the meantime to contact their own representatives in the parliament and to tell them the truth. What is the refugees and what is the refugee camps and what is the demand of the Palestinian refugees to solve their refugee issue? I want to thank you very, very much for our for your time, Basim. Basim, how can people be in touch with you? See, people can go to my website, basimeat.com. Mm -hmm. They can see exactly what I am doing, what I am talking about, and they can, of course, contact me through that website. And I understand that you're available. You've been working with our Center for Near East Policy Research for the last several years, and you're available to speak. That's right. To address audiences, to come and uh, come to Sweden, also to invite. Uh, Swedish diplomats to come visit you here. Yes, okay. please. You are most welcome. If any Swedish delegation will come to Israel, I am ready to take them around some of the refugee camps in the West Bank and to show them exactly what is going on and what is the Palestinian refugees are really seeking. 
I thank you very much. This complements the work that we do, all the research we do on the schools and on the terrorist infiltration, on the disappearance of funds. You know, Vasam, now there's a, a cottage industry of uh, funds that are that have been dis disappeared from one run and they're being used for marketing of women, yeah. marketing of yeah. drugs, marketing yeah. of cars. Unfortunately, yeah. And this yeah. is this is what it, what what's, what this this has come down to. And I, I think that the donors should have to open more and more their ears and their eyes towards what is UNRWA is doing with this, such a huge amount of budget every year. Right. And what do you say when people say, when, when when people say that UNRWA tells you that everything's under control, they know where the money is? I don't think that there is anything under control. And I think that UNRWA is not a, a, a reliable body for any kind of truth. Last but not least, you grew up in an UNRWA camp. I grew up for 33 years. I still have six brothers who are living oh. in Shafat refugee camp. And I am every 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 month I am visiting them in the refugee camp, and I saw how the conditions in the refugee camp is really getting worse and worse. And what do your brothers see as their future? See, I don't think that they see any future inside the camp. Right. Unfortunately, they don't have you know enough money to leave the camp and to buy houses outside the camp, and this is unfortunately how UNRWA is surviving in the past 71 years. Well, I thank you very much and thank you. Welcome again to our Thank you, Bedi. Thank you, thank you. In Sweden we'll see you. We'll uh, have a chance to discuss this tomorrow at their at their conference. Actually, this is being shown on uh, October That would be great. Incidentally, it's being, this is being shown the day before United Nations Day, which is October 24th. That's right. So that's a that's way, right. way to celebrate it by uh, by by respecting the values and the principles of the United Nations. That's right. That's right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All the best to all. And this is David Bedin with the Center for Near East Policy. Research. And Basem Eid from Jerusalem. Thank you.